everybody on YouTube? It's your boy 97 Kicks, and today we're going to be talking about how you can start your sneaker collection in 2021. Let's get right into this. Alright guys, so as you guys already know now, it's the pandemic, it's uh, COVID-19, the economy's hurting. So that's exactly why right now is the perfect time to start your sneaker collection. So because of all that's happening, sneaker prices have been at an all-time low, guys. All-time low. Like normally sneakers that should be at $300 is at like $200 right now. So it's a buyer's market right now. So it's a perfect time to pull the trigger and just start your sneaker collection. But I would say that you would need to be particular with the sneakers that you choose. So for example, OG colorways. OG colorways are not not a good idea right now because after the last dance, those colorways have absolutely skyrocketed. As you can see with the uh, Concord 11s or the Black Cement 3s, uh, you know, like the OG colorways that have been featured, especially in the last dance, those have absolutely skyrocketed. So that is not a good idea. Not a good idea. The sneakers that you want to be looking out for are sneakers that aren't necessarily OG colorways, but have OG color blocking or like resemblances to OG colorways. So those are the sneakers that you guys should be looking for because those are at, I would say, are much lower prices than what they should be at. So for example, like the Concord Bread 11 Lows or the Concord 11 Sketch Lows or like the Jordan 1 Smoke Grace. These are recent releases that just came out and they're at so much lower prices than I thought that they were gonna be because of what's going on right now. Even though they're not necessarily OG colorways, especially like the Concord 11 Bread Lows. Those are like a mashup of two colorways. Those are at such affordable prices right now, guys. Especially if you're not super picky about the sneaker absolutely having to be an OG colorway, like an OG head, like me. Then it's not a bad way to go at all, guys. Not a bad way to go at all. So you could go for those sneakers to uh, start your sneaker collection. But let's see, other than Jordans, let me think. Hmm. And like I've said in a lot of my other videos, y'all should really follow Soul Links because they have a ton of steals and deals out there, guys. So many sneakers under retail. They always notify you when there's a price drop, whenever it's at the lowest price ever. For example, like those React Element 87s, I think they retail for 160. And I saw them on Soul Links. He tweeted it out and it was only like $81 at one point. So there's just some crazy deals out there, guys. So other than Jordans and Nikes, when you start your sneaker collection, you really want to be, you know, a little bit diverse. You don't want only Jordans. You don't want only Nikes. You don't want only Adidas. You want a good diversity of different kinds of sneakers too. You want a diversity to suit every condition and to suit every outfit. I know I'm only talking about sneakers right now and I know that that's a casual shoe category on its own, but sneakers in and of itself is just so diverse. There's so many different types of sneakers that I think it's fine to have only sneakers, but then have a diversity of different kinds of sneakers. You, you know what I'm saying? You really want a diversity of sneakers. So I would say, you know, have some Jordans, have some Nikes, have some Air Maxes, have some Adidas, have some NMDs, have some Ultra Boosts, have some uh, Superstars, you know, some of those quirky brands too, you know, like uh, Puma. You just want a diversity, you know, like if you only have Nikes, right? Like how are you gonna fit that with your Adidas Superstar tracksuit? You know, you can't do that. So you, you, you need a diversity. So you need a diversity, okay? If you guys have been enjoying this video so far, don't forget to drop a like down below and smash that subscribe button. It's really gonna help me a lot. And another tip that I would give when you're starting your sneaker collection is don't just buy all the sneakers all at once, you know? You want to buy them gradually. Don't make the mistake of just buying all those sneakers all at once because that might just be an impulse buy, you know? If you buy it all at once, then it's much more likely that you're going to have a lot of sneaker regrets because over time, we all grow, our tastes change. It's better to purchase sneakers gradually so that you have a culmination of your tastes as you grow. But if you just purchase it all at, at once, you know, just you just purchase all the sneakers all at once, then it's just much more likely to be an impulse buy and much more likely to be a fad, much more likely to be a taste that you have only at that short period of time. 
instead of a culmination of all your tastes and it's not going to be as tasteful as a sneaker collection that's grown over time. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, but if you grow your sneaker collection over time, you're much more likely to have memories associated with that sneaker. That sneaker would be much more memorable. You have a story behind that sneaker. You have a story behind how you acquired that sneaker. For example, okay, I had to camp out for this sneaker for so long. Oh my God, like I got this sneaker for my birthday, or I had to win a raffle to win this sneaker. But if you just purchase it all at once, then there's not really a story behind that anymore. And you don't really have any memories tied with that sneaker and you aren't going to be as attached to that sneaker. You're not going to value that sneaker as much as if you acquired those sneakers gradually, you know? It's like easy come, easy go. So one of the best stories that I have with my sneakers is probably in my Travis Scott one. And even though I got this sneaker for retail, which is 175 plus tax, that is absolutely crazy because these sneakers were reselling for $2,000 at one point. And one of the biggest reasons why I did not want to resell this sneaker even though I would have made a profit of like $1,500 because of the story that I had tied to this sneaker. That's why I was just so attached to this sneaker and I could not ever let the sneaker go. So the story I had was that I was in China, right? I was at a cafe with my friend and at that point I was really getting into sneakers, right? So I was always checking the sneakers app. I was always refreshing the sneakers app. And I was always watching YouTube videos about the latest release. I had this sneaker in my radar for the longest time the Travis Scott ones and I remember they had a shock drop during the uh, Super Bowl performance I believe and then they said that they were gonna have a wider release in April I believe I remember like I was glued to that phone I was glued to going on the sneakers app I was glued to this drop that was happening in the evening because um, you know like the time difference uh, between uh, China and the US and I was glued to my phone and I was going to do anything to get the sneaker and I entered the raffle on the sneakers app and if anyone here uses the sneakers app you know how janky it is sometimes it was just pending for the longest time. I kept on refreshing, nothing was happening. I was panicking, am I not going to get these shoes? I finally got a page that shows got them, right? But like, it didn't show the image of the sneaker. It didn't show these Travis Scott ones. It was just like image not found or image not available. I went crazy. I was like, oh my God. Did I actually hit on the sneakers app on a hype drop for once, like the Travis Scott one, probably the most hype sneaker of 2019, sneaker of the year. So I closed the app and I turned it back on and it showed on the sneakers app. It showed purchased. And I just went crazy. I'm like, oh my God, that was like probably one of the happiest days of my life that I won this sneaker. So yeah, guys, if you have a story attached to your sneaker, you're going to like that sneaker so much more. You're gonna be so much more attached to that sneaker and your sneaker collection is going to be so much more. So that's why I'm really strong on gradually growing your sneaker collection instead of just buying everything instantly. And I would also say for sneakers that aren't super hyped, uh, super limited, you could actually just try your hand and just trying out the sneaker, especially if you buy a used sneaker, right? Say you don't really know if you're into like Air Max 97s, right? You could buy like a used Air Max 97 or buy like a GR Air Max 97, you know, just wear it a little bit. And if you don't like it, then you could sell it and it wouldn't be that much of a loss. Or if you bought it from Nike, then there's always that 30 day money back, even if you wear that sneaker. So you could just return it. So I would say really don't be afraid of trying new sneakers especially now there's so many good return policies like Nike and Adidas they both have that 30-day return policy even if you wear the sneaker I believe so that's a really good deal that's a really good way of like trying out the sneaker if you don't like it then you can return it even if you didn't buy from them right like especially if you buy a used sneaker and if you wear it and you don't like it you can just sell it again it's not going to be that much of a loss so really don't be afraid of trying new things so for me I had the CDG Converse I had it for several months I realized that out of my 20 something pairs of sneakers I wasn't really wearing it that much and so I just decided to sell it just because I realized that I'm not really a Converse guy I'm more of a Jordan and Air Max sometimes Adidas kind of guy but I'm not really a Converse guy so that's why I sold that sneaker so I bought it for 135 plus tax and then after wearing it for a little bit I sold it for 100 so yeah that is a little bit of a loss but you have to try things you have to sample out things to find out what your style is to find out what kind of sneakers you like and if you don't like them you can always sell
sell them. It will take a little bit of a loss, but it's a learning opportunity so that you can pinpoint your style and you know what kind of sneakers that you like. And so that next time when you go sneaker shopping, you know what type of sneakers that you're looking for. And earlier when I was talking about having a diversity of sneakers. So not only do you want different styles of sneakers, different brands of sneakers to match your different types of outfits, right? But you need different sneakers for different types of occasions. So for example, you're not gonna be wearing the same sneakers that you go to the gym with to go on a date night, right? Like that's not going to happen. You wanna have a diversity of sneakers to suit each events for example for me when the gym was still open and i was working out regularly i would have a pair of sneakers specifically for the gym and those were my beater sneakers because i knew that i didn't really care that much about sneakers it's okay if it gets scuffed and dirty i don't really care so those were specifically my gym sneakers and i wouldn't use it for anything else other than to go work and so those were specifically my beater sneakers so that my other sneakers that i cared about would stay fresh and crispy for the events that i wanted to go to for the nights out that i wanted to go to so you should have different sneakers for different occasions. You should have a beater sneaker. You should have a heater sneaker. You should have a formal sneaker. So you should have sneakers for different events. So for me, I have my beater sneaker, which was my Ultra Boost. Those were for the gym and those were for work too. And I had my heater sneakers, like my Travis Scott ones. So those were when I felt really felt like stunning, you know what I'm saying? And then I had my formal sneakers, my Stan Smiths. Uh, these were for when I had more of that uh, more formal kind of event to go to, you know, like how to dress up a little bit, you know, in school. Sometimes we had like those uh, banquet dinners or what have you. And those were for trying to be a little bit more grown up, trying to be more a little bit more formal. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, guys, that's pretty much gonna make it to the end of the video. If you liked it, don't forget to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and turn on post notifications because I'm dropping videos like a madman over here. And it's been your boy 97 Kicks, and we out, y'all.